invite you to join me in our prayer of confession as we confess our sins before God and before each other. Let us pray. God of wonder and awe, we admit that often we are too busy to revel in the wonder of your creation. We are so hurried that we miss chances to just be, to just be present to another, to be present to the creation around us. When we hurry inside without gazing at the starry sky, forgive us. When we fail to respect each creature and creation around us, yet profess to love the earth, forgive us. Create in us a spirit of compassionate curiosity to explore and fall in love with all of creation. Give us the energy to live out our faith even when it would be easier not to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
And it's true that we do miss opportunities to enjoy the beautiful creation around us, to understand the wonders of this great world that God has given us. And yet we are called again, it's a time to renew, and this is an opportunity to be outside, uh, to be in God's presence, uh, to see the wonders and the beauty all around us, and remind us that it's there all the time, not just now, but all the time. And so because of this, God renews us and calls us again to be God's faithful people. Thanks be to God. For scripture today, I'm reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 35 to 51. Uh, this is the beginning of Jesus gathering disciples around him and uh, share those with you. So the next day, John the Baptist was back at his post with two of his disciples who were watching. He looked up, saw Jesus walking nearby and said, here he is, God's Passover lamb. The two disciples heard him and went after Jesus. Jesus looked over his shoulder and said to them, What are you after? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He replied, Come along and see for yourself. They came, saw where he was living, and ended up staying with him for the day. It was late afternoon when this happened. Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother was one of the two who heard John's witness and followed Jesus. The first thing he did after finding where Jesus lived was find his own brother Simon, telling him, we found the Messiah, that is Christ. He immediately led Simon to Jesus. Jesus took one look up and said, you're John's son, Simon. From now on, your name is Cephas, or Peter, which means rock. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. When he got there, he ran across Philip and said, Come, follow me. Philip's hometown with Bethsaida, the same as Andrew and Peter. Philip went and found Nathanael and told him, We found the one Moses wrote of in the law, the one preached by the prophets. It's Jesus, Joseph's son, the one from Nazareth. Nathanael said, Nazareth? You've got to be kidding. But Philip said, come, see for yourself. When Jesus saw him coming, he said, there's a real Israelite, not a false bone in his body. Nathanael said, where did you get that idea? You don't know me. Jesus answered, one day, long before Philip called you here, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God the king of Israel. Jesus said, you've become a believer simply because I say I saw you one day sitting under the fig tree. You haven't seen anything yet. Before this is over, you're going to see heaven open and God's angels descending to the Son of Man and ascending again. This is the word of God for you, God's people. Amen. As we share out here, again, I share as I did last week that uh, from the scripture and hearing the call of the disciples and as they invite uh, their brothers and their friends to come and experience Jesus, um, I also speak from my own experience of where I've seen God working and hope that it relates to you finding God working in your lives as well. So I think the way it happens here with them to in inviting each other into God's presence uh, reminds me of what we often talk of as evangelism in the church, of helping the church grow. And evangelism is often a very scary word. It sounds like something really foreign. We often think we need to have uh, a well-placed three-point doctrine of everything about uh, the Christian faith that we can prevent to some, present to somebody and somehow convert them. Uh, but I think it's as easy as uh, what these disciples did, the initial ones. Come and see. I found what I think we're looking for. Come and see for yourself. Uh, it should be that natural for us, I think. Almost like you would a, a new restaurant opening up. And you go and you try it out and you enjoy it. And so 
you don't have to tell the person you like it that they're going to like it or that they have to order exactly what you ordered or this is how the food is prepared. All you have to say is, right, I found a new restaurant and I liked it. Uh, you might want to try it. Uh, and that just comes natural for us and hopefully uh, our own passing on of the faith, our own evangelism ought to be that natural. Just, you know, I found something, a place, a church where I find meaning. Why don't you come and join us? Something that easy. Uh, so it's really springs from our experience and then wanting to share it with others. So I'm going to share that with you today because we're out in camp. I went to camp for the first time uh, at the earliest age you could. I was uh, third grade and it was an overnight camp. We went for a week, came in Sunday afternoon, stayed till Saturday morning. Um, and it was the conference camp for the Troy Conference of the United Methodist Church, which is upstate New York and all of Vermont. And Sky Farm is just north of Lake George in New York, uh, between Warrensburg and Chestertown. Uh, and I went to Sky Farm, as I say, as a third grader, and I had an awful experience. I was so homesick. It was incredible. Uh, I had no, you know, there's not a fun moment I can think of that week. Uh, one of the things I did was I called home, they had me call home twice, uh, hoping that that would help me. They never let campers call home there, and I called home twice. Uh, the one night our group didn't stay in their cabin, they slept out on the ball field, I slept in the nurse's cabin. Uh, I had a stomach ache. Uh, it was just an awful week. Um, I survived it, I went home, and that was it. That was the end of it. Uh, come the next year, my mom signed me up again. Uh, my mom went to that camp uh, and had a great time, so she couldn't understand anybody not having a great time at Sky Farm. So she signed me up again uh, despite my protests. I didn't want to go back. Uh, and it came to a head the night before you know, we were supposed to go Sunday to be for registration. Saturday night, we had a big fight. Uh, I, you know, was just, I don't want to go. I'm not going. I don't want to go. And my mom got so upset, she just dumped my whole suitcase out right on the floor and said, you know, fine, you're not going. And then we kind of reconciled. Everything got packed into the, um, into the suitcase again, and I went. I had the best time. Uh, it was a whole, you know, it was a totally different experience. You know, it, everything was great that year. Everything was good. Uh, and finally, my mom uh, was able to pick me up and see a smile on my face at the end of the camp week. And then I, you know, I had, you know, telling her, I just had the great time. She said, well, you remember that when next year comes. You know, I don't want to have another fight like we did this year. Uh, and so after that, I went every year, went every year. Um, that I could, it went up through junior high, and then there were some away camps. So I did a couple of senior high camps, ninth and tenth grade, uh, where we went out on canoe camps in the in the uh, uh, along the Racket River and in the Saranac Lake chains, and we spent the whole week away from camp in the canoes, uh, and continued to do that. Volunteered as a counselor for a week uh, after my senior year in high school, uh, and then after my junior and senior years of college. Uh, I was a full-time counselor there, a permanent counselor, for the seven weeks of camp. Uh, and again, you know, counseling is, is really demanding. So you get your, counsel, your campers at um, noon on Sunday, one o'clock on Sunday, and you had responsibility to them, for them till about 10 o'clock on uh, Saturday. So continual responsibility for all these kids. We got paid $70 a week. Um, can imagine what the hourly wage was, but it wasn't the pay, it was just being at Sky Farm uh, was the great thing. And so where this comes around is uh, one of the weeks in the changeover, uh, as the campers were signing in, there was a camper there who did not want to be there. Uh, he had been there just the week before, and he'd had an awful experience at camp. Uh, and it was rare, most of the campers at Sky Farm only came for a week. Every once in a while there would be a camper that would come two weeks in a row, and Ryan was one of these campers. Uh, but he had had an awful experience this week before. 
and as he came, he didn't want to be there. And he was expressing that in the registration line, and they were struggling with what to do with it. Uh, his mom was a single mom, and she had vacation plans uh, to be away for that week he was at camp. So this was her daycare for the week. So she was committed to having him there. Uh, and she was kind of beside herself because he was so upset about coming back. Uh, the uh, camp director, Bruce, was talking with her and trying to uh, figure out what to do. And then they brought me into the conversation. So Bruce and I and the mom were talking because he was supposed to be assigned to my group that next week. Uh, and so uh, we talked and, and Bruce was asking me, do you think you could handle Ryan? You know, do you think it would be okay if he stayed? And so I said, yeah, I think, I think he would fit in with the group. I think he would do okay. Uh, and so we decided that's what it, we would do. Now, Ryan was still really upset. I had to hold him in my lap and just kind of hug him as he dug his fingernails into my forearms while his mom walked out of the registration and got in the car and drove away. He didn't want to be there. Um, but as it turned out, um, he had a great week that second week. Uh, the first week I could kind of understand, you know, he was set up for it. Uh, I had seen his group a couple times. I didn't particularly see him, uh, but they had some volunteer counselors and they were there at the church camp. And so they thought what church camp should be should be a lot of Bible study. Uh, so for three third graders, they had them doing, you know, two or three hours of Bible study in the afternoon. Uh, and it was just a, that gives them the opportunity to sit there and think about where they're not. They're missing their parents. They're missing that. Um, I had been there so often that I knew everything and often tried to get my kids to do everything. So we did that. We did. We held our chapel services and led the appropriate ones. We did our, our chores for the day, whether it was cleaning up, setting the tables for the meal, or whether it was cleaning up afterwards, or whether it was cleaning out the bathrooms. Uh, we did our, our chores. Uh, we um, uh, hiked to the castle. We hiked to Lookout Mountain. Uh, we went to the river and sat in the rapids and, and let the water run over us. We had our swim times. Uh, I kept the kids busy. Uh, in New York, there's a law that they have to have uh, some quiet time after lunch, FOB it's called, uh, flat on bed or feet on bed. My kids used to beg for that time. Uh, they wanted that time to rest because we were so active. So as it turned out, Ryan had the best week ever, uh, and, or a great week while he was there uh, and in my care. And that just warmed my heart because it, it, it wasn't that I was so great, it was that I could pass on my experience where I had come from having a terrible week and then having it followed up with a really great week. And then I could be the one that helped Ryan experience that, having a terrible week and then having it follow, uh, followed up by a great week. So uh, it was a way of sharing my experience. It was a way of helping somebody else love a place that I had come to love. Uh, and that just warmed my heart. Uh, and I think when you have that kind of experience, that, that's why my mom wanted me to go there. She'd had wonderful experiences growing up going to Sky Farm. So for me to be able to have that with Brian, uh, there was no other camper like that that I had that, that uh, did that. But he, for me, exemplified what I had gone through and just made me feel great about it. Um, as I've listened to kids uh, from our own church that have grown up coming here to Camp Wabakwasset when it was a day camp, um, I know what a special place it is for them. Uh, and so it's a place they want to bring other people to because this is so, what a great place it was. Um, we've been here, um, I've been out here with different families. We've celebrated weddings here because they've had a history of being out at camp and this is a sacred place. We've celebrated funerals here uh, because this is a sacred place where they knew God's presence and came back to. Uh, so it's because of that history, because of that experience, that they want to share that with others. I can remember uh, every year Jackson Subner would come out here uh, and he would always tell us, I was conceived here. Uh, and, uh, and talk about, you know, he had been here his whole life. Uh, and this was a place that he uh, wanted to come back to and share. 
Uh, it's sharing in those experiences, sharing the things that we find wonder in, uh, that, are, that we can pass on. And that's the way we share our faith. This is wonderful for me. It's a great experience. Why don't you come and see? Link found this snake this morning. Uh, and it's a pass around pack now. Uh, that everybody else wants to see it as well. And he's willing to share. Uh, and that the, everybody that's holding it is willing to share with those that uh, want to see it. Uh, and they're very, being very respectful for those that don't want to see it as well. Um, and so it, it's that kind of experience. And so uh, as we come out here to this beautiful place and have wonderful experiences, I hope we understand that the great experiences we have in our lives become something we want to pass on to others. We want somebody else to have those experiences. The way we experience God, we can't make you experience that way, but we can offer you, come and see, come to the place where I experience, come to the people I experience it with, and maybe you'll have that experience too. That's the nature of our faith. That's what the early disciples did, what Andrew did for his brother Simon. Uh, come and see, I think I found the one. Uh, the way Nathaniel was encouraged by his brother. Come and see, we found the Messiah. Uh, that's what we come to do, to share what we've experienced uh, so that others can be uh, enriched in their lives and share that time as well. So may we gather in this beautiful place and may you take the wonder of God's creation, the wonder of God's love, and as you experience it in your life, may you share it with others. Amen. And I invite you to share joys and concerns as we come into a time of prayer. I uh, want you to know that Helen Card has been in uh, the hospital. She's been in and out of the hospital. Um, she was in with, with what they thought was pneumonia. They sent her home. Uh, she went back into the hospital, and they're not sure what it is at this point, or last I talked to her, uh, but she was expecting to go to Douglas Manor uh, at the end of the week. So she should be in Douglas Manor by now. I don't know for sure, but Hel I ask for your prayers for Helen. Are there other joys or concerns we should share today? Link? I'll ask for prayers for the people who have been affected by the apartment building collapse. Yes, thank you for the people in Florida with the apartment building. Uh, not only those who were there, but their loved ones who are just in such limbo now, waiting for word. Uh, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, I call him Uncle Glenn. He uh, recently found he's got a tumor. I'm not sure. We'll know the results soon if it's cancerous or not. Another friend of mine, Jerry, has cancer, fighting it. Okay. So we pray for Glenn, uh, who is... Uh, found a tumor and waiting for results, uh, and also Jerry. Jerry also has cancer and is fighting that. Um, I'd also lift up uh, my daughter's father-in-law, Rich, who's got esophageal cancer uh, and is really uh, not doing well with that. Uh, and his name is Rich, so ask for your prayers for Rich as well. Others. I invite you then, we have our prayer is a prayer of litany, so I invite you to read responsibly this prayer today. Let us pray. For the miracle of creation, in all its infinite diversity and splendor, we give thanks to the one who sustains us. We give thanks that we too are part of For the rhythm of a paddle gently striking the water, the morning mist in a field of clover, the call of the loon, the radiance of sunset, the sparkle on the water, and the dance of the dragonflies. God, we know that we have too often isolated ourselves from the very things that bring us a connection to you. We pray for the wisdom to seek out places such as Jesus did the mountain, the plain, the lake shore, the wilderness. We pray that we may remember that Christ is present in ourselves and We pray for all those who need to be part of an inclusive community, a place where the natural world radiates, or to both. 
and yet who cannot find the time or courage to do so. Gracious God, we pray for camps and retreat centers and all sacred places whose mission is to bring people to an awareness of your glory. We pray for each participant in all United Church of Christ outdoor ministry programs, that they may have a safe and meaningful experience and a season of strengthening faith. We thank you for this And God, please help us, help all of us to live out the message of our church as inspired by Jesus. To love you, to love ourselves, and to love our neighbor. Amen. And our closing song is Pass It On, and again you'll find those words in an insert. on this uh, I think reflects well on, on uh, the words that I spoke and, and the idea of passing on our faith to others, passing on the loves of our lives uh, and the uh, beauty of God uh, from one to another. So we'll sing that uh, now uh, for the beauty of the earth.
so we do go from here. We have come here as people of faith because someone has passed that faith on to us. We are those who want to pass it on to others. May you go sharing God's love with those in need. As you go, may it be the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. And I invite you to join me in just a brief prayer as we have a grace for our meal as well. Let's pray. Almighty God, we are grateful for the nourishment of our souls, that you seek our well-being, and that you help us to grow. As we break bread together, share a meal of community. May it be your spirit that binds us together. May it be your spirit that renews us. May we be strengthened not only physically, but spiritually, emotionally, and mentally as we gather as a people of faith to share in this meal. For these are the gifts that you share with us. This beautiful spot, the food that nourishes, and the promise of your love now and always. Amen. Go in peace, have a wonderful day, and have a wonderful meal, hopefully. This COVID stuff has us all twisted around because Bruce has a lot of fire lit and burgers and hot dogs ready for us now. So. <laughs>